Corals are extremely resilient creatures. Some reefs have been around for more than 50 million years and are still holding up. They are very important for a variety of different aspects. First of all, coral reefs are at the base of the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet. Even though they cover less than 0.1% of the ocean floor, they host almost a third of all marine fish species, in addition to many other marine animals. These extremely biodiverse ecosystems are approximated to provide around 10% of the total fish consumed by humans. In terms of money, they are also very beneficial, as they are a major focus of the tourism industry and produce an income value of around 36 billion US dollars per year. They also protect villages and other populated areas from the devastating impacts of strong waves, waves and storms. Therefore, they are majorly important not only for biological natural aspects, but are also very important to humans. However resilient and important they are, they are facing an alarming number of threats, which are all caused by us humans. Coral reefs would definitely be able to heal themselves and adapt to these situations if it wasn't for the fact that they have too much to deal with in too little time. They are facing threats such as the warming of the atmosphere, the acidification of the oceans, the increase of natural catastrophes, and a large number of smaller scale threats such as coastal construction or destructive fishing. That is why these ecosystems now require that they be actively conserved and restored. Silviculture is a term that is described as the practice of controlling growth, structure and quality of forests to meet certain values and needs. This concept has now also been applied to marine ecosystems and coined marine silviculture. Before, coral reef restoration concentrated more on directly transplanting corals from a healthy reef to a degraded one. Over the last 25 years, the concept of coral gardening or coral farming has become uh, a notable restoration avenue for coral reef ecosystems. The difference with the last method is that the gardening tenet happens in two phases. After the collection from a certain area, coral fragments are brought to a nursery and monitored for a specific amount of time. The second phase consists in the transplantation of those corals onto a degraded reef area. My thesis is composed of a review of past and current methodologies within the transplantation phase of the coral gardening, gardening tenant. Throughout my study, I have discovered a wide variety of different methodologies applied to this restoration process. Furthermore, I have also outlined some discrepancies in those methodologies in order to try and steer them in the right direction. So first of all, just looking at trends, already since the start of my work, I have noticed that the number of papers relating to the coral gardening tenant has very much increased over the last 25 years. Since 1995, approximately 170 papers have been published in this domain. For a comparison, in the period of 1995 to 1999, I was only able to collect a total of four papers. Whereas, in the period of 2015 to 2020, I was able to collect a total of 90 papers. Now for the more interesting stuff, how are the corals actually transplanted onto the degraded reefs? In fact, there are a number of attachment methodologies that are in use. There are two that are more widespread than others. Adhesives, such as marine epoxy, is the main one used to transplant corals. Immediately after that, nails, cable ties and wires are also a very widespread method. Other attachment techniques include cement, uh, tubes, pipes, and other plastic items, clips and pegs, and lastly mesh frames, which are wired frames where multiple corals can be set at the same time and then transplanted. As for the general use for these types of experiments, the most commonly used one is by far Acropora. Members of this genus are commonly known as staghorn corals. However, this result might have actually been biased because of the fact that most studies using Acropora were conducted in the USA which is the only place where this coral is present. In this slide, the other three most widespread genera are Pochilobora, or cauliflower corals, Stilophora, or cat's paw corals, and Porites, or hump corals. Now to talk about the main discrepancies that I found, I propose multiple improvement points to keep in mind when researching this area. The first factor that needs improvement is the way that the coral material used is presented to the reader. Some papers gave life stages, some papers gave the size of transplants. If there isn't a lot of time, having to compare these two types of materials would be impossible, as they are not comparable. I had, this, I had a similar remark towards the way growth rate was represented. Some papers used centimeters per day, others used the percentage of total growth, others used the diameter, etc. The range of terms used was too varied to analyze in a short amount of time. Therefore, I propose that a unified system be set up for each of these two problems in order to promote knowledge sharing and to further research into this area. 
The third and last pro uh, key problem that I found was that the vast majority of papers did not mention the number of transplants in their experiment. I believe that this should be a piece of information that is always given as it gives the reader a skill to better contextualize survivorship, growth rates, or any other factor that may be researched in a specific study. Now, as for the ethical considerations of the study, there is not that much to say. Uh, the only thing that I can think about it uh, is related to the restricted access that some papers have. Uh, I've gotten access to most papers uh, thanks to Maastricht University and the access that that gives me. However, without that access, I definitely could not have created this review in this complete a manner. Furthermore, this also applies to papers that I was sent from my supervisor, which were given to me for the review, even though they were not necessarily public. There are more interesting facts and smaller discrepancies that were observed. However, I guess you're going to have to read my whole thesis in order to get access to those details. I hope that you learned something and that I gave you more insight into this fascinating restoration process. As a last note, I would ask you to please keep in mind the importance of coral reefs and the crucial impact that they have on both natural and human aspects. Because we are losing them at an incredibly fast rate and we can conserve and restore all we want, but if we keep producing and consuming at our current rates, we would live in a sad, grey and artificial world.